Okay, a meat question is up next. It says, my in-laws pulled all their money out of the market when one of their friends told them it will crash later last year. So how should they best re-enter the market now that they're in this position? Now think about it. You know they didn't sell on December 31st after the market ended up being up no, over 20%. Yeah. You know they sold probably. I bet it was in the third quarter. In the third quarter. I bet they sold when things are scary. And man, oof, <laughs> that hurts because fourth quarter was really, really good last year. Market made a lot of money in the they fourth quarter. They probably don't want. You know, the way to get them back in is not to say, I told you so. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. <laughs> uh, here's, here's the way that I would approach this, I mean, if I was going to have the conversation. Hey, guys. I know that you made an emotional decision, and and unfortunately, it did not work out. We all know the markets are fairly volatile. It, it could have worked out differently. You could have sold in second quarter, missed all the third quarter, and you would have felt great about this decision. I know that when it comes to me, and by the way, you would have felt bad about it after you got back to the fourth quarter. You'd only felt good for one quarter of that decision. I know for me, whenever I don't know something for certain, whenever I feel like I'm approaching approaching a decision they could be somewhat emotional. I try to put together a strategy and structure in place that removes the emotion exactly. from the equation. So you've already made an emotional decision and it did not work out the way that you had hoped that it would work out. Rather than us making another emotional decision, and this is what I mean by another emotional decision. Oh, I missed fourth quarter. I'm going to take all the money. I'm going to reinvest all of it right now today. Well, if you do that, and then maybe the market turns down again, maybe first quarter loses money. Well, now you've likely gotten double whammied. And you're like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I think rather than doing that, say, hey, why don't we do this? Let's figure out what portfolio makes sense for you guys. Is it a 60-40? Is it a 70-30? What does that composition of the portfolio look like? And why don't we, over the next 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, you figure out the number every month, Let's just allocate towards that portfolio. If we're buying a 60-40, every month for the next 10 months, let's just buy towards a 60-40 portfolio. So that way, if the market goes up, great. Every month I'm investing, my dollars are getting more and more valuable. If the market goes down, great. Every month I'm investing, I'm buying at lower and lower levels. It is a completely non-emotional decision. You will not be 100% right on when you get those dollars put back in, but you will save yourself from being 100% wrong. That's the way that I would approach that decision. I'd also use this as a time to make that type of big decision. I think there's a fundamental or an underlying issue that needs to be addressed. And that means we, we often say a good plan, a well-designed plan that reflects your goals, your age, and everything else will be good before mm -hmm. volatility hits, during the volatility, and even after the volatility. So the fact that you, this person capitulated and actually went to cash so it shows that there was a failure in the plan mm -hmm. somehow. So I'd first triage where is this person right. in their financial order of operations? Do they know their number? Do they know what they're going towards so that they can have a purpose? So every ar you know dollar in their army of dollar bills feels like it actually has a mission, a goal, and it's out there. And it feels like that was disconnected. Mm -hmm. So go back. Figure out the plan that actually reflects the goal that says, hey, how much risk should I be taking to reach these goals? How much risk that takes into account my emotional side where I've already got now a, a history of kind of reacting to the fear? Um, how do we kind of create a plan that will be, once again, back on track, good before, during, and after? And once that's designed, now let's go systematic mm -hmm. to take the emotions out of the actual implementation and let's over 10 months put this money to work. Mm -hmm. That's the way kind of I would look at it. And if this is something, this is why, once again, people say financial advisors are worthless. Mm -hmm. Just go buy the index fund. Guys, when you're getting into seven-figure investments, this is the part that cracks me up is that you now are the CEO of a seven-figure enterprise mm -hmm. and you've only done this once. Why not get somebody to help you navigate this so you don't make the decision that takes you away from making an additional 15% on your money? I mean, when we're talking about uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody's retirement savings later in life, that could have been a hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar decision. Yep, easy. and that's that's the part where you've got to understand what are you doing, 
why are you doing and how do you do this to get the best version of yourself? That's why I don't worry about our jobs going away. Can I tell you what I love about the financial order of operations? Now, if you're following it, right, you get to step four and you have emergency fund. You have a fully funded emergency fund. And you said that uh, these, uh, these folks, the in-laws, I'm assuming that they're a little bit older, maybe they're retired. They pull the money out. One of the things I do, whenever clients call me, they're like, I'm nervous. I'm thinking, I want to go to cash. Should I go to cash? Should we sell? I'm like, I ask them, hey, how much cash do you have on hand? And, yeah. and, and if we've done a really good job planning, that answer should be 18 to 24 months of living expenses. That's how much cash you should keep on hand. If your in-laws had 18 to 24 months of living For expenses retirees. In, and they're in retirement, it's a really easy conversation to have to say, hey, do you really think that whatever's going on this month or, or the next two months or this next quarter, do you think 18 months it's still going to be going on? Or do you think there's a really good chance we will have made it through? That, that's why we keep their emergency reserves in there. So if you can follow the financial order of operations to a T, you're going to set yourself up to be able to have those conversations and, again, not have to make emotional decisions at the world's worst time.